Welcome. In this session, we are going to talk about uh, the security of PostgreSQL cluster, which is running on a virtual machine. There are two parts of it. One is the demo part, wherein demo is there on a single node. And there will be another demo, which will be written on two nodes. And we will see the SSL and TLS, which is configured for PostgreSQL, which is running on a virtual machine, and how a client connects to it remotely and then how this TLS and SSL comes into the picture. In this, it is just a presentation. The demo part will be there in the portal, which is courses.emultiskills.com. And uh, to find it out, you have to navigate to the section which I have been updating, which is PostgreSQL database general topics. It is PG 16, 2024. So let's start with it. SSL and TLS in PostgreSQL. Data security is utmost requirement in all the organization. It is a small organization or a big organization. Security is everybody's concern. And we should try or we should implement all the ways to make sure the database which is or the data which is at rest, the data which is at in transit, they should be properly secured and uh, you should try your level best to make sure that you have the full security uh, in place. Let's see an overview of SSL, which stands for secure socket layer and the another term, which is transport layer security. These are the encryption protocols which are required when you have to secure the data when it is running over the network between the nodes. You have a source node where the data is residing and uh, um, there is a target from where you are coming to the source of the data. In case of PostgreSQL, when we say SSL or TLS, it is used to establish a secure connection between the client and the PostgreSQL server. It is just to ensure that the data which is transmitted that is encrypted and protected from unauthorized um, access. SSL and uh, TLS, it, it is going to provide you a secure channel for the data transmission. It, it does it by encrypting the data and verifying the identity of the communicating parties. It helps you in avoiding the tampering and forgery of data when the data is in transit. If you do not have the SSL or TLS or any other third party a tool in place which is going to ensure that the network packets should not be intercepted and they should not be read by uh, by anything which the, when the data is being transmitted it may have the very sensitive information it may have the username passwords or anything else database is just used to store the sensitive information and uh, sometimes those informations or in general those informations are very very critical postgresql supports ssl and tls encryption to ensure client server communication by enabling the ssl and tls in postgresql we can ensure that the data between the client and the server is encrypted providing the additional layer of the security enabling and enforcing SSL and TLS in PostgreSQL is very, very important to protect the sensitive or general data from unauthorized access when the data is in transit. And one of the way is just enable your SSL and TLS uh, encryption for the PostgreSQL. What do we do in general? The first step we generate or obtain SSL or TLS certificate. So first thing which is required is to uh, create the certificate. You can generate self-signed certificate or obtained from a trusted uh, certificate authority or self-signed certificates are suitable for testing and development environment while CA signed certificates are recommended for the production environment. How to generate a self-signed certificate? We can use the open SSL command, and this is going to 
uh, create the self-signed certificate. What it does is this command generates a self-signed certificate with the name which you provide and a private key. If you mention the number of days, it is going to uh, create the days for uh, X number of days. In case uh, for us, if you are just giving 365 days, it is going to give you for one year. Once you have the SSL and TLS certificate configured or generated, you need to configure PostgreSQL to use them. By default, they will have the default ones available. In our case, when we do the demo, we have to add it the PostgreSQL.conf file, which you can find using PostgreSQL-c show config underscore file, and that will show you the PostgreSQL.conf location. You have to edit that file and you have to search for SSL. By default, you will see the SSL on SSL search certificate file location and SSL key file location. You can set the SSL file location to the one which you have just created. Better to keep it the default location which you have just created. Specify the path if you wanted to have a different location. Since Postgre is going to use that, so just make sure that uh, permission 400 is given. And also just make sure the ownership is given back to the Postgre SQL cluster itself. Once you have made these changes, you have created the certificate. You have updated PostgreSQL.conf. Either you reload uh, the configuration or if it is uh, it is a development environment or something like that, uh, you can restart the PostgreSQL instance. Now, how do we enforce that the connections, they should enable it? So enforcing the SSL and TLS connection is going to ensure that the all clients connection to the PostgreSQL servers are encrypted. So now we need to add it our hba.conf, which is Postgre host-based authentication file. This is the file which is the entry point for the clients to connect with your PostgreSQL cluster. So you need to add it. it. And anywhere or everywhere wherein you wanted to have the SSL configured, since this is a demo environment, what we will say is host SSL. Normally you see host all, all, you provide the IP address and then you give the encryption method, uh, the password authentication method. In, in this case, just for this demo, we are giving MD5 or otherwise uh, you can give uh, SHA-256. What we are saying is enable SSL for all the hosts who are coming from any IP address through the MD5 encryption. You have to be very specific. We cannot give this uh, all IP address for your environment. You can just give the specific IP address, range of the IP address, or the subnet through which the other IPs will try to connect you. Once you have made the changes, you reload the configuration file, or if it is a demo environment, just restart it. How do we verify? To verify the SSL or TLS is enabled in force, you can test a connection using PSQL command. So you can just say PSQL SSL mode is required. Hostname is the target hostname where your PostgreSQL cluster is running. DV name, let's say it is uh, Postgre. User is also Postgre. And if the connection is successful, it means that SSL and TLS is enabled and enforced for PostgreSQL. This is how it is going to look, and this is all you will see in the demo. So I just exported the password. So this is the password for the demo environment. And this is this all step is there in the step-by-step -step SSL and TLS configuration. So I'm just saying. This is for the same host. There is another demo where in from remote host, if a client is connecting, we have you will see all the steps which are mentioned in the portal. So this is I am talking about the SSL configuration protocol. You have TLS version 1.3 cipher and the detailed compression is off. This way you can ensure that your connection to the PostgreSQL is secured and security breach is not possible when the 
uh, network protocols or network packets are in, in transit.